So this is the five main bearing MGB or B series engine oil pump. It takes a gear that goes on the end of it here. It then goes down, meshes with the cam, and drive it, and it goes in right here. Of course, I'm not ready to put it in yet. I don't have the studs or anything in, but we'll take a little bit closer look at the actual pump itself. So there have been a few issues over the years with the replacement pumps to where some engine builders would actually prefer to use the old pumps that come out of the engines as long as the rotors aren't scored up and the clearances are good rather than putting a new pump in. Now I haven't seen too many problems with these in a while. Uh, the biggest problem I ever had one time was it was mismachined here on one I had to where once I put the oil strainer on, the oil pan didn't want to go on and you really had to push down on it. So I ended up having to take a little bit off the top of this to get it all to sit right. Other than that, I haven't actually found the clearances and stuff to really be off on any of them, but there's hold held together with these two bolts here. I always do check them and take them apart. And you got these rotor in here. Now what I like to do with every new pump is check the clearances. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn the rotor to where these are lined up right here. Then you're gonna check the clearance right here. And there's a clearance, I think it's five thousandths of an inch. Check it on all four of them. And as long as you're less than five thousandths of an inch, it's, you're good there. Then you can use like a straight edge, put here and check it this way and see what you got this way. And you want it to be less than six thousandths of an inch. Now you can correct that if this is the problem. The way you can correct that is you can take this whole rotor housing and everything out and you can put it on a piece of glass plate with some fine grit sandpaper. I like to use like 400 or 320 grit uh, DA paper because it sticks. Because if you're just using something that doesn't stick, it could bunch up on you. And then you just basically just work it a little bit. And I like to keep turning it and work it and turn it, work it and turn it. I like to keep turning it because as you're working it, especially if you got to take quite a bit off, you could end up naturally pushing one side or the other with your hand. And if you keep turning it, you'll keep that from happening. And then you can look at the top of it and see also if you got any high and low spots, you'll have uh, clean and dark, like light and dark spots there. That ensures that you're smooth but then you can work it until you get the clearances where you want. You can also do the same thing with your, the pickup tube here. If there's wear in here and you're using your original one again, you can do the same thing with this and get rid of that wear. And you can also check it, pull the pins out and check it and make sure it's nice and flat because this is a machined surface that requires both surfaces to be flat to seal properly. Now, a lot of people like to, to put the high volume pumps on. And the big thing with the high volume pump is, is it's the same exact pump, but it's got modified, that this part here is modified to where this is actually drilled through, where it's gonna be slightly larger here at the end. And then it has a passageway milled in it right here to allow oil to come through here on top of the rotor rather than just on the bottom of the rotor down here. It's not, in my opinion, necessary on the street. If you really only need that, if you're running high RPM, pretty sustained, like in racing applications. So there's no real need to do that. But what I do like to do is tear all these things apart and take a good look at the castings. You're gonna look down in here 
usually the casting down in here is not that clean and you got a lot of sharp edges and there might be some stuff hanging out there so i like to get down in there with a small dremel and just clean that up if you look at the oil flow through the oil pump it sits like this on the engine with the uh, pickup screen here it sucks up through this way it goes up now this big hole here doesn't even need to be here. This can be completely blocked off because that does not have anything to do with the engine. The oil comes up and then makes a, 90, a 180 degree turn and goes back down into this rotor housing here. So what I do is I look at how well this matches up with this with this on there looking down through there. And a lot of times this doesn't match up super well. So I clean this area here out a little bit so that matches up well, and then just do a slight radius here and just clean it up. You don't have to go crazy, just enough so it's not doing anything to restrict flow. Then when you get into this here, it's going up through here. And I will show you later on the engine block here, all of this here. But when you get in here, there's always a sharp edge right there. It's not a bad idea if you're worried about flow to just break that edge. I've started on it. I haven't finished yet because I got to dig for more bits for my Dremel to clean it up properly. But you do a light radius right there. And actually, you can do a light radius here too. But if you're going to do a radius here, you have to be careful that you're not going too high to where you get into this ledge here. You gotta stay below that. Now the oil comes out this hole into the engine. And I think this is probably your biggest restriction and I'll show you later. But when you get into here, you can also clean this out here. Same thing, you don't wanna get into that shelf right here. So most of what you're gonna do is just be knocking out with a small file like this, just all the extra crap that's from the casting process where it's just inhibiting flow you probably don't want to go too crazy with trying to open it up and give flow uh, and you don't no need at all to work on this area here that's or trying to do anything with this and you'll see when you put the gasket on there it doesn't match up it doesn't matter so in regards to oil flow now that we got the gaskets out you could make a case for this being a bit of a restriction and you could work on that area there on in to here, but you got to be careful work on this side of it. And once you're done doing any kind of work you decide to do to this, if you do any of it all, Make sure you thoroughly clean everything before you lubricate it with some oil and put it back together. Some people like to pack this stuff with grease or Vaseline to make to ensure that they're going to get good suction and oil flow when they start cranking the engine over and trying to get oil pressure. But the way I prepare an engine for first startup, I don't need to do any of that, so I won't be. One of the biggest single issues I think with building these engines, especially for people who haven't done it before, is actually a problem within the gasket set. See, this is the sheet of the, for the five main gaskets. These are oil pump gaskets. This is for the screen on the bottom of the pickup. And then you have these two gaskets here. But why two? I don't know. This is the five main oil pump gasket. This is the three main gasket. But they're both included in this set. And now we can't just say, well, this whole sheet is the same sheet, because it's not. The oil pan is shaped differently for a three main. So why they include both, I don't know. But let me cut this out of here and this one out and I'll show you the problem and why it's a big problem. 
So it's a really common issue, seems to crop up several times a year on the forums, and I've had people talk to me about it at car shows too, where they put a motor together and then they crank and crank and crank and crank and crank and they can't get any oil pressure. Now, you look at these two gaskets, you got this one here. They see that and they go, oh, that's the gasket. And they throw that one on there. Never look at the block to determine which gasket you're gonna put on your oil pump. Always look at the base of the oil pump. If you put that gasket on there, see that? Leaves that whole thing open. Now, we just said the oil comes in through here, then travels around here and it goes into there. If that's open, all it does is suck air, you never get any oil pressure. This gasket, on the other hand, goes all the way around that. Now, why is it cut like this? I have no idea. This could be completely solid, it wouldn't make a darn bit of difference because there's nothing machined in the block here. And because there's nothing machined in the block, that's why people look at this and go, well, this has got to be the right gasket. So I've been working on my pump here. What I ended up doing was taking a ball end uh, carbide bit here, and I went in here and worked on this bridge right here and made this nice and sm much smoother around the transition through there. And then I opened up this to be much, much, much closer to the gasket. And by using this ball end, what I ended up doing was actually making this kind of bowl shaped right here. So there's a radius here going, oops, radius here kind of transitioning that into the port on the block back there. And then blend it on back through here. But I took some out of the bottom here so that it's closer to the port, to the floor down in here. And then radius is slightly, because there's, no, there's nothing down here as far as the rotor. All of that, those parts there sit in here up. So yeah, I made this transition a little better. Will it improve flow? Maybe. Was it a waste of time? Maybe. But I'm willing to put some time into this stuff to try to ensure good oil flow to prevent further problems like I've had before. So now all the clearances have been checked. Everything's been modified, lubricated it put it back together, it's ready to be put in the engine. So we get the gasket, put the gasket on there, make sure it's orientated right so they'll, this hole lines up to that hole there. The screen here, I have never actually seen one of these come loose, so I don't actually Loctite them. If it was a race car, I might, and technically this kind of is a race car, but it's 90% of the time it's on the street, so. These, if they're sitting right, are just touching the bottom of the oil pan anyway with just a little tension, so they shouldn't actually come loose. Lubricate the gears and all the where the shaft goes and put it in. I tend to go off the rule of thumb with stuff like this where if this, if the lock nut, lock washer is going to be going against aluminum, I like to have a flat washer there. Myself. We tighten that down and then we can test fit the oil pan. Now, since I've made all these modifications, and this has been modified, and the oil pan is basically, you know, almost a home build, 
I want to make sure one more time that everything's sitting like it's supposed to be. Like I, like I said, I have had one time an oil pump where it just didn't sit right. And the oil pan ended up sitting way too high off of the block and it was sitting way high here and you really had to push down hard. But in this case, we're not. It actually could have been, when I welded this, this puckered slightly. So it's not quite against it, but it's close enough that I'm not gonna get too excited about it. So one of the other little things you always gotta deal with in order of assembly is these cork gaskets that go in the very ends of, on the main caps. Because if you put this in place while you're doing the front plate, then it tends to want to squeeze out if you use any kind of gasket sealer on it. And if you put the back one in now, it'll want to squeeze out too. So that leaves you a little conundrum of what to do with it. I usually like to do gasket sealer on everything, but like I did not put that in there when we did when I did this plate. But you can actually take this thing and compress it slightly in your bench vise. Just just so that it fits in here. And then you can push it in place. But like I said, if you do use gasket sealer on it, then it's gonna probably just squish out of there. But, you know, there's different ways. Everybody probably does it their own way. Uh, I've done it many different ways over the years. And I'm trying it this way on this motor to see how it works. Because I'm tired of fighting with them things squishing out and falling out and not staying in place. And realistically, that spot there I'm not sure how much the gasket sealer is going to make of a difference on that. But then, before I put the oil pan on, of course, put my um, windage tray in. Now I did actually lock, uh, put locking thread locker on these. It was some blue removable stuff because I don't want these to come loose. And then, as always, I like to do a light smear of gasket sealer on this, and then I put it on the oil pan, and then do another light smear, then drop it on the motor and put all the bolts in. That's not going to guarantee a leak-free engine. Um, seems like these things find a way to leak. No matter how carefully you assemble them, no matter what gasket sealer you use, whether you use it or not. But we just try to do the best we can to minimize that and keep it from leaking anywhere we can.